This is Stevie Solace and welcome to Arbor Live. Tonight we have the Julian Taylor Band along with Jerry Soretta and a nice Canadian girl who grew up in Switzerland and is setting Europe on fire, Miss Natalie Jans. So stick around, buckle up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live. <laughs> Someday, baby, I'll kick this thing. But I really don't know when that might be, cause my heart's got a memory. My heart's got a memory. Oh, We're Darlings of Chelsea, and you're watching Arbor Live on APTN. Okay, boys. <clears throat> Follow me. Hey, man, 
in. And push. <sighs> Eric, come on. This is never gonna fix your lower back. If you wanna fix your lower back, you gotta do Thai chisel. It's a mix of hip hop with a little bit of Oriental noodles. Happy ending. No, 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 no. F that. What we need to do, boys, is release our chi from our inner sanctum. Watch. Follow me. And. Ah! Adam! That's not releasing the chi that he's talking about! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Son of a bitch! Do you think for one day out of our miserable in lives we could actually act like adults, huh? Being an adult is boring, man. You're the most immature Indian I've ever met in my life. Cut it out. Well, today that's gonna change. Today, I start acting my age. How long do you think it's gonna be till he's lighting his own farts again? Five hours? <laughs> 10 minutes.
Doesn't he look like Hugh Jackman? Does anyone <laughs> ever come up to you and go ask you if you're Hugh Jackman? Uh, no. Do you guys think he looks like Hugh Jackman? Wolverine? <laughs> you got Wolverine look going on here? I don't know. I don't maybe. know. Can you see his face, the cameraman? He looks like Hugh Jackman. Well, maybe it's my, that's, a, that's good, my brother from another mother. Right, 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 right. You look like a big, a big gentle cowboy, but at, like you, you're probably playing some rough bars throughout Manitoba in your career early on. Probably, did, did you ever like be singing, and you got the chicken wire happening, and like someone starts acting up, and you just go, "Excuse me." You put your guitar down and walk out, and just knock the crap out of him. You come back on now. For my next toe tapper, I'm gonna play this one. And you're a big guy. I mean, you ever <laughs> have to swat somebody? Uh, you know, country boys. That's how we deal with our differences. So it, I'd like to see that. <laughs> We keep that stuff uh, on the DL, you know. I, I would like to see you walk off the stage. Put your, excuse me, ma'am. Put my guitar down. Well, it, it's more. It's more about you know what, <laughs> guys. I'm putting on a show here. Uh, if you want to talk after the show, you know where to find me. Is that right?
We're Secret Broadcast, and you're watching Arbor Live on APTN. Dude, I just owed eat on all these Cheetos and crashed out hard watching the Jets. I fucking love the Jets! I, <clears throat> I mean, uh, look at the news. A lot of pain, suffering, and uh, torrential floods, and skinny puppies, and gonorrhea. It's horrible. Well, for adults like me, the news is like a hockey game for punks like you. You guys listen to punk rock? What's going on? What are you doing there, Eric? Getting all caught up on your current events? Yep. But you wouldn't understand, you know, with uh, mortgage rates and all, Palestine. You boys just go back to your punk ass activities. Okay. Would you like another cookie, senor? Or perhaps a Cheeto? Why are you talking like that? Because I like cookies. Okay, senor, I would love a cookie. <laughs> Just one cookie, please. <laughs> well, who knows? <laughs> Come on now. So, Natalie Jans, it's, you're like a... Were you from Edmonton? No. I'm Canadian, but I live in Europe. Uh, Originally from Vancouver. Oh, I thought your family was from Edmonton. I was talking to this guy that he used to manage the crash test dummies, and we were talking about you and your music, and he he uh, he he knew your father. Oh, okay. He didn't know him personally because I remember him. He was around in the '80s and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And uh, is this like a a Canadian slash European uh, sort of a blend of your personalities and in, in your music? Or because you seem very wholesome, like a Canadian, but you are also very worldly, like a European. Well, um, my, talking about my dad, he was in the known group called Deliverance in the 70s. And so I grew up with Canadian-American music, but in Europe. So I just try to blend everything together. Not being in Canada as a young girl, did you have to go to Canadian schools? Yeah, I went to a Canadian school in, in Europe. Did they remind you of your Canadian roots so you always knew where you, who you were and where you were coming yeah, from? Yeah, well, I mean... Or did um, they hit you with a ruler? Were they strict? No. They <laughs> Who would be less strict, a French school or a Canadian school? Canadian. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. You never got, a you never got paddled? No. <laughs> they have capital punishment there still, don't they? I don't know. You were always a good girl, though, weren't you? I know you. Most of the time. So do you find now that if you're traveling around the world, when you're in Europe, do you have more, more influences coming at you since... I mean, I ran into you in Switzerland, and we recorded together in Stuttgart, Germany. Right. I mean, you're, you're traveling, I mean, you're, you, you must be getting a worldly sort of view of music and the music business. Well, yeah, totally. I mean, um, I am Canadian, but I recorded my first album in Germany and in Canada, and so... Um, I grew up in a family where we listened to North American music, so I, I would also consider my music Canadian American. You're, you're still obviously you're very young, and your music you've you've already this is your second album you're working on right, right now, and do you find that uh, is it harder now, hard, getting harder and harder for people to become successful? Or do you find maybe in Europe it's a little more open than in North America? I think it's actually quite similar. I mean, nowadays everyone knows it's tough, and um, as an independent, you just have to work your butt off. Mm -hmm. You can say that on Canadian TV. Say it on my show. For okay. Sure. So. Um... <laughs> <laughs>
Longfoot, and you are watching Arbor Live. What are you two shit birds doing now? We're going sewer surfing. What? Sewer surfing. It's all the rage, dude. Yeah, sewer surfing! We get our buddy with his ATV, and he drags us behind it through all the sewers under the town on our surfboards. It's awesome. The ocean's polluted. It's better than the sewers, man. You want to go? I can't. I got a job. You got a what? Where? At a bank. A food bank? A blood bank? At a money bank, you morons. Look at the size of this f***ing rule book. Whatever, dude, why don't you come with us? Yeah, come with us! Did you f***ing retards hear what I just said? An Indian handling money. It's a white man's worst nightmare. Now, I gotta learn this f***ing rule book before 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, f*** off! Whatever, Grandpa. <sighs> yeah, whatever, Grandpa. I hope you drown. Yeah, I hope we drown! <sighs> So if you start recording and making records when you're 14? That's when I started, yeah. Well, how do you even know what you're doing at 14? You it's don't. Like you're in the studio going, OK, hold on, let me fix that chorus. I mean, what are you doing? Honestly, we didn't know what we were doing. I started playing guitar and playing piano when I was a lot younger than 14, maybe about four years old. I started playing piano. My dad's a pianist. Yeah. And uh, then in high school, that's when it all happened, right? Like, we, we just hang, hung out. Jeremy, the drummer, and I have known each other for close to 20 years. And we just gather in friends' basements, grab a, a bunch of guitars and some amps, and just play songs, you know? Was it an odd thing for you to find your place in the Canadian music industry? It's, I'm still finding it an odd thing. Um, it sounds like and, you're singing country you know, to me right now, right away. I've, I've done everything from country to reggae to R&B and blues uh, to funk and, uh, and soul and rock and roll. Uh, the only thing I really haven't really covered was classical music and, and uh, heavy metal, but the band does a bit of jazz stuff too and, and whatnot. And, uh, when I first started out, I just really liked blues music, you know, and my family background is my mom's part Mohawk yeah. and my, my father's from Antigua. That, yeah. That? And uh, so it was, a, it was just a, a mesh of things. When we grew up, I didn't really hear the Rolling Stones until I was around 10. Really? Because we just, listened. my dad loves Nat King Cole, my mom loved Motown, and that's all that we listened to. We used to have dance parties in the house, and that was it. Huh. And so when I hit high school and started getting to the Beatles, the Stones, Led Zeppelin, it was really confusing because I really, really dug it. The thing that I noticed with you is you have a, I, just from that bit I, I walked in, I could tell right away that you have, a, you have songwriting, real songwriting skills. I mean, your arrangement was like, it was like real. Thank I hear you. a lot of people's arrangements, it's like, ah, you know, I'd, as the producer, I'd be like, I gotta edit that out right away. But yours was really, really. Thanks, man. I spent a lot of time with it and I play with some really great players and uh, they're great friends. So we all, you know, collaborate uh, and we all seem to be able to pull, the, pull it off, you know? <laughs> Outside, I've been working all week and my brain is fried. Didn't want to go out tonight. But what the heck? I ain't seen my buddies in way too long. A big time thirsty's coming on strong. Shower and shave and that ain't all. Just catch my old big check. That'll get you drinking a cold one before you know it. That'll get you thinking. I kind of like where this night is going. Sign says, come on in. A kick butt bang kicking off in ten. Didn't want to tie one on, but then I think I will. Cause we got girls in this place wall to wall. If one walks up and wants to talk, I'm gonna need more. I'm going down, that'll 
gets you drinking. Well, the Haggard songs about honky tonks don't make you toss one back. Just have two or three hot Cajun wings, cause I know for a fact that'll get you drinking. A cold one before you know it, that'll get you thinking. Kinda like where this night is going. I sure love this sound. Good time going down That'll get you drinking Go on Before you know it That'll get you thinking Kinda like where this night is going I sure love the sound Good time going down That'll get you drinking That'll get you drinking seems like guys like you or Shane Yellowbird, some of you, guys, you guys are like seem like you're taking over country music in Canada. You had a number one record already, right? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of couple number one singles, and it's been going quite well. And I, I think it's a building process. Like every time you you put out a new CD, you hope for the best, yeah, sure. and you give it your all. But as you go along, you grow and you learn new things about what what's working for you as an artist. You grow as an artist. So I mean, when you first come out. Uh, out of the gate, so to speak, you're you're pretty fresh, you're pretty new, and it's as you move along and, and different songs, different sounds, you literally build your career. Like there's no way that I've seen to just start it right out of the gates and have it down. Was your first single a number one single? Uh, the first one was yes. Well, what are you talking about then? You, you, <laughs> that makes no sense what you just said. There's no way you're gonna start it slow. You build it. Your first single was number one. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> I think that that's incredible that your first single was a number one single. I just find that to be amazing. I'd... Well, you know what? I, I have to uh, give credit to the people who played the song and requested the song. Yeah. Because without people requesting the song and playing the song and yeah. listening to the song and enjoying the song and coming out to the shows, there's no career. Yeah. Like, uh, again, it's, it's putting something out there and you hope for the best. Yeah. But without everybody else, without you guys, you couldn't do this. So thank you. I've been around a lot of musicians in my life, and and uh, I've seen a lot of jackasses. And yeah, you, you walk in the room, you got a wonderful vibe. Your attitude is amazing. I bet you're going to just be huge. And I just want you to remember that I said this on national TV because <laughs> if you're ever out and anybody messes with me, I want to see you knock the crap out of them. Just send me a send me a text message. I got your back, Steve. <laughs> Jerry Serrata, Arbor Live. What's up? I'm Aaron Lewis Sustained, and you're watching Arbor Live. Windbreakers, I think they called it. And boy, ain't had pussy since pussy had him. You know who loves him some swimsuit models? Eric! Oh, I love the name Eric. If he were here, I'd probably take my swimsuit off. Right. Can you do it anyways? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but only if my magical elf mermaid says yes. Oh, come on, that's not even a real thing for fuck's sake. <laughs> Sure, let's all get 
So now, what's the plan for you for the next year? What do you want to do? Well, now I just recorded four new songs for my second album, and we're pushing my first single, The DJ's Burning. And I hope that that'll get out there now. Me too. Yeah, you wrote it. I know, I'd like to make some wrote it. She actually recorded a song that I wrote. <laughs> I know on your record, you had Mark Shulman from Pink playing drums on it, and Sean Davis from Nika Costa playing bass, and you had Dan Rothschild who plays with Shakira, and, and Fiona Apple playing bass. And, uh, Everybody seemed to be a huge fan of yours when, when they were in there. Everybody loved this record. But I know when we listen to the tracks, it's, it's not like your typical mainstream, uh, you know, Max Martin sounding pop record or, uh, or uh, any type of, it's traditional. It's, it's definitely something, you know, a little left to center. Are people responding to it well around the world where you're playing it? Yeah, uh, the response is great. My goal with these songs and with my new album, which I also um, did with my first album, I want to do real music. Um, but commercial as well. All right, well done. Natalie Jantz, our uh, favorite Canadian globalist. Thanks for having me. My name's Braun. I can't talk, you have a better voice than me. That's Troy. He plays the bass in Mastodon. And I, uh, I smack them tubs up. You're watching Arbor Live. We're Mastodon.
Hey, girls. I'm back. Yeah. Ain't you supposed to be working? Yeah, working. Nah, I got fucking fired. It turns out the bank gets real pissed off if you take your work home with them. Especially if it's 600 bucks. <laughs> That's a bummer. That's a bummer. No, not really. Now we can go sewer surfing. Turns out that sewer surfing wasn't as cool as I thought. Who would have thunk it, but there's a lot of poop in that water. I got some poop in my eye. Well, what about the fucking models? Ah, oh, they went back to Sweden. Yeah, Sweden. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I'm out of here. Hey, guys. What did I miss? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I think there's an artist you have to go through those phases of getting away from it for a minute to recharge your brain yeah. so you can come back to it. You know what I mean? It's like... You need a good night's rest for the brain sometimes. I, I really... I used to do that where I'd, I'd go on tour and go back-to-back -back world tour and then I'd go up and I'd take off and go surfing for a year. And, That's awesome. You know, and, and realize, okay, now I have, I'm, I have to get back to work now. You know? So you surf? Of course. I want to surf, man, so bad. I snowboard, but I, I asked somebody what surfing's like, and she says, well, it's like snowboarding, but the wave's chasing you. It's not, though. <laughs> I, I went snowboarding, and I'd never been so humbled in my life. I've been skiing all my life, right? Yeah. So I thought, well, I, you know, I wakeboard, and I surf, and I skateboard, and I mean, I'm, I almost skateboarded professionally when I was a kid. And uh, I got on, I got on a um, um, snowboard, and I've just never been so embarrassed <laughs> in my life. You got to wear hockey pants the first time you learn, oh. you know? For people of color, sometimes it's a lot harder to, to break through in areas that aren't sort of set up for where you're supposed to break through. I'm supposed to be a hip hop reggae yeah, artist. Yeah, you know. Right? And <laughs> right. I, I feel like I am sometimes, because I really love that music and, and explore it, that kind of music as well. And, but you shouldn't have to do it you because know. you should have any option available to it. Everybody should, right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you get our Ukrainian uh, assistant director there, and he, he likes to do polka music mixed with, um, <laughs> with Public Enemy, and it's, he should have every right to, to rap in the Ukrainian language, right? Absolutely, damn straight. <laughs> It's not very good, <laughs> but he has the right to try. Well, thanks a lot for coming out, man. Stevie, it's great to meet you, man. Thanks My for pleasure, having us. My pleasure.
Let's <laughs> go.